Amen. Did you know, did you ask the person sitting next to you, you, did you ask their names? All right. I know you don't know the name. You're waiting for the fellowship moment to ask the name, right? So good to see you all. And today, actually, um, I'm proposing you guys to read Matthew. I don't know if he's projected. Yes. Here we go. Uh, I'm too short, so I don't want to hide the, uh, the scripture. Can you all see here, right? You're good? Great. So let's all read together Matthew 28, verse 1 to 9. When we read the Bible, we think it's just stories that we read. But for me, every time I read the Bible, I take, his, I take it so personal as a reality that I'm reading. And when the Bible explains how the women, they went to see the body of Jesus. Because they, they, they had to put perfume on his body. That was the culture in Israel. And Matthew actually is telling us how things happen on that day. And when it comes to Easter, we, we all say Jesus was crucified and then he rose again do you all believe that i want to hear you guys do you all believe that jesus died and rose again because if if we don't agree on that there is nothing i'm going to preach here everything that i'm going to say is going to be like a lies because we have to come in an agreement and we believe that jesus died and he rose. Amen to that. So what is Easter? When you ask someone what is Easter, some people would say we go to church and we get eggs. It's all beautiful, right? And I'm so sure today after service there are eggs that prepare outside. Is not Mrs. Sue? Mrs. Sue, we're getting eggs, right? Yeah. All right. There are going to be eggs that will be shared for each of us to take it home. But it's not only about eggs, but there is more than this. Easter should be a day where Christians would come to church or wherever they gather and they, they, they have this image of joy. Because, because of Easter, we became who we are. Can I get an amen? If Jesus was not resurrected, we wouldn't be here. So the reason for us to be here is because he rose. I thought you were going to do like this anyways. Only in African church they clap for that. So um, based on my little research that I did, and Easter was, is, is called in um, Aramaic, I don't know if in Greek, they call it Pasha. Which is one of the, um, they call it the Resurrection Sunday. And it's a Christian festival where everybody will gather together to celebrate Jesus as he rose from the dead. The New Testament shows us how Jesus on Friday, they say Friday Easter, he went to, to Jerusalem where he knew that he's going to die. And some of the church, they will start to celebrate Easter from Friday until today on the Sunday. But um, the story doesn't finish in there. The Bible presents to us that there are two types of Easter that are in the Bible. I'm so sure you all know that. There is a Greek or a Hebrew or Jewish Easter. And there is also Christian Easter. So the Hebrew Easter began when the Israelites or the Hebrew at that time, they were in slavery in Egypt. And remember when Moses went to see Pharaoh... And God is telling, is sending plagues to uh, Pharaoh, you know, like all the plagues. And in the last plague that God sent, and he says, this is going to be the last one. And Pharaoh will let you go to the promised land. And God says this, I want to kill, or I'm going to kill every firstborn of Egyptians. And this is going to be a lesson to Pharaoh. However, for you... I'm going to treat you differently. And the Lord say, everyone should kill a lamb or you should kill one animal which is one year old. And you put the blood at the door of your house. And this blood will be my covenant between you and I. In another word, it says, for me to keep my promise to you. I want you to put the blood of the door of each house where Hebrew people are living in. 
And when you read Exodus chapter 11 and 12, the Lord is saying to Moses, this is going to be a covenant between you and I, and you shall celebrate. You shall remember every time. And it happened to be the first day of April, based on the calendar. This is why when Christianity comes, Jesus was going to Jerusalem to die. He knew that he's going to die. And on the Friday before Easter is the day when Jesus is gathering with his disciple and sharing the Passover. So for us Christians, we focus on what Jesus did with his disciple before he died. Can I get an amen? Are you following me? I need, to, I need to, to put some background so that we all know where we are coming from and where we're going. So um, I was saying that that's the difference between the two Easter's that exist in the Bible. There is one Jewish Easter and there is another one, the Christian Easter, what we celebrate right now because of what Jesus did. But the Jewish Easter happens when they were in Egypt and every 1st of April, they will gather and they will celebrate together. Oh, they remember what the Lord did for them in Egypt. Is that okay? That's a good. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm becoming a professor at university. Hey, I wanted us to get some of the lessons that I believe they're going to be very helpful in a couple of minutes. I just want to jump in it and then you can share the, the lessons that I found out. And the first lesson, Brother Kim, would you help us to, to put that on the PPT? Is that we learn from Easter that the unfailing love of God to all humanity. Easter reveals to the church the unfailing love of God to all humanity. Which means back then or before we were not we were not in the family of God. But the Bible says in John 3.16 that he said he loved the world. Then he sent his only son. And he continues to say, whoever believes in him shall not perish. But we have eternal, eternal, which we were not, we couldn't, we wouldn't deserve before. So God loved us. He said, I'm going to send you my son. I'm going to send you Jesus. And he's going to die for you. So that I prove my love to you. So I want to tell somebody today. That God loves you more than anybody. No matter how I tell you that. I tell you that I love you. God loves you better than I do. No matter your husband says. He's too much romantic. Like one of my young is sitting there. Says like I love you so much. Yeah, he loves you. Don't be afraid, Nuna. He's, he really loves you. But I'm trying to say that God loves you more. Because God says, before even you were born, I knew you. And now he says, when Jesus died on the cross, it was because of you and me. In 1 John, the Bible says, see how much the Father has loved us. We are called God's children. Remember that we got even a new identity, which we did not have. Before knew, knowing Jesus, I love what the Apostle Paul says, we were like considered as animals. But after knowing God, we are the children of God. Somebody believe that. So Easter comes to reveal the love of God to us. So through Easter, we win or we want God's love and favor. Because when you are the son of God or you're the son of the king, which means you are a prince in the kingdom of God. Through Jesus, when God sees you, he just loves you. When you love Jesus, God loves you more. Amen. Amen. Somebody will say, I don't know even how to love. It doesn't matter. God loves you. What he's asking you is just to believe that he loves you. Amen? So in Easter, we do not only experience God's love, but we got a new identity, which says that we become the children of the living God. 
we were before lost, but now we are found. That's why when we sing amazing grace, how sweet I once was lost, but now I am found. We are found in Christ because of Easter, because of what God did on the cross. Amen. And the second truth that I want to share with you that from Easter we experience freedom from sin to redemption. From, because of Easter, we experience freedom from sin to redemption. Before then, it was when you sin, you had to go and give a sacrifice for your sin to be, sorry, to be forgiven. But now Jesus says, I will be the sacrifice. I'm going to die for you. Remember the Easter that I just finished to explain is that in Israel, they had to kill a lamb, an animal, to put the blood on the, on the altar so that God will agree if he has forgiven you or not. But because of the blood of Jesus, for us, we don't have animals. But Jesus shared his blood so that you and I will be forgiven. And we are redeemed because of what he did on the cross. Second Corinthians says, God made him who had no sin to be seen for who? It's written on the PPD. I repeat it again. It's very important to know this. God made him who had no sin to be seen for. So that in him... We might become what? The righteousness of God. Amen. Because of Easter or because of what Jesus did on the cross, we became the righteousness of God. Salvation is available. He says, come to me all you weary and take my yoke. It's easy. No matter how many sins you committed, God says today, I was crucified on the cross for you to be saved, for you to be forgiven. John 8, 36. I want just to focus on the last verse that says, 36 says, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed in another word says no matter how many sins you committed before when jesus sets you free you are free indeed when you ask for forgiveness god forgives you i love what one of the prophets say um it's joel in the bible the prophet joel says he's a god who forgive your sin and forget it isn't it beautiful when you say, Lord, forgive me for what I've done. He says, I forgive you. And the Bible says, he forget about it. Only us remember our sin, but God doesn't. So I want to tell you, this is an important message. Is like, once you have confessed one sin, don't repeat it again. Because the Lord says, it's already over. It's already over. Be free in Jesus' name. Amen. And the last, the, 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 the third lesson is that through Easter we experience the power of God and the assurance of our salvation. I wish I had enough time to explain this more. Is that the Bible says that God rose Jesus from the, uh, the tomb with his power. With the power of God, he rose Jesus in there. So with the same power that lives or that rose Jesus from the dead, when you become son of God or children of God, we get the same power. There is a song that says, the same power that conquered the graves lives in me. The same power that resurrected Jesus is what lives in me. And I want to tell you and I today is that you are a powerful person. Sin has no hold on you. You are more powerful than the devil. You are more powerful than whatever you think it is. Can I get an amen? We have to believe 
that God gave us the power. In Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus is saying, Then he came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to be to the very end of the ages. Says all the authority has been given to me. And when you read more down here, you will see that the Bible says that when we become children of God, the power as well is given to us. To us. To us. Amen. John, I think I put it in the John down here. I'm going to read it again. But in John 1, uh, 1 12, the Bible says, But to all who believes in him, he gave them to the power to become children of God. And it's not your will, it's God's will. Once you belong to his family, whatever you ask as the prince of the kingdom of God, he gives it to you. Because of what Jesus says. And the assurance of the salvation. Actually, when we speak about salvation, I've been saved. I am saved. And when you ask someone, you're saved. I says, yes, saved. What does that mean? What would be the definition or the meaning of being saved? Salvation means is to be saved from sin and all his consequences. To be saved from sin and all the outcome that the sin can produce in us. When you say you're being saved, it means like you're in danger. And someone say, I am going to quay you. Kuhada is what you call in Korean, right? You've been saved from something to be put in a safest place. And this is what the Lord did. Jesus died to the cross on the cross so that he takes you to not go to hell. And brings you to the family of God. And this is what we call salvation. Does anyone believe that you belong in the family of God here? Just raise your hand if you believe that you belong in God's kingdom. Thank you so very much. And the last thing that I'm going to share is that salvation is a free gift. And every time as always say, I don't want to leave this pulpit without giving you the message. Which is the message of the cross. That salvation is. It is free. There's no need to kill animals. There's no need to pay money to be forgiven. There is no need to cry a lot. There is no need to be, to be stressed. There is no need to ask many questions. But I want to tell you that salvation is free. And if you haven't given your life to Jesus, I want you to say, Lord, today I want to start a new journey with you. It's never late. It's never late. Salvation is always available to all of us. Amen. Romans 6, 30, uh, 20, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. When you believe Jesus, you're saved. And it's not only being saved, but there is life after this life that we are living now. Do you all believe that? Do you all believe that? I met some people, they told me like, when I die, I want to become a kangaji. Someone told me, when I die, I want to be a tree. And the other says, I want to be a flower. And they ask me, what about you? Then I say, I'm going to be living again. Some people, they believe in incarnation. When you say like you believe in incarnation, which means after you die, you become something else. It is also life. That means you continue to live. It's okay for you. If you want to be Kangaji, that's your business. But for me, I believe that one day I'm going to live with Christ Jesus in heaven. And we are going to celebrate the almighty God with him. So beloved, I want to remind you that there is life after this life. We live for a mission. And it's very short. Very short. Don't think or do not believe that everything we see now, that's all that exists. There is more, more 
than what we see, than what we have right now. The Bible says, at the sound of the angel, Jesus will come one day, and those who are alive will go to meet him. And those who already died, they will resurrect it. Do you all believe that? As Jesus died and rose, so as I, we will do the same thing. So if I die today, don't cry too much. One day you and I, we will meet in heaven. Amen? Amen? I know you don't like that. It's like, Frank, you're going to die on Monday. Not on Monday. When a Christian or when a person who believes God dies, for us Christians, I love what the Apostle Paul says, to die for someone who has been saved, it is a gain. When I was reading this the first time, I was like, what did you say? It's a gain, gain for what? Because heaven is welcoming that person. But for us, we murder, we cry, we say, we're going to miss you. You are going so fast. You are going so soon. That is not a problem. But this person who was a Christian, make sure one day you will see that person. I don't want to say one day, but soon you will see that person. Because Jesus Christ is coming soon. And us who are saved, we will be roused with him. We'll go to meet him. We'll be, we'll be having great, good time with him. Not only the 30 minutes of worship that we spend here. John, that day you're going to play the guitar forever. Say amen to that. So I'm going to finish my sermon. I want to encourage you. As I title my message now. Easter is. For this year. I want each and everyone in this place to go back home and define your own Easter. Go home. Remember what Easter means for me. What is special about Easter for me? I said, we learned that God, we have seen what we experienced the love of God. We have been, been, been set free from sin to redemption. We have we received the power of God and the assurance of our salvation. And the last thing I said, I'm going to be saved and never go back again. This is the Easter for this year. Choose what is best for you. Say, today I've been set free. Today I've experienced the love of God. Today I'll be saved. Today I need the power of God in my life. Can you close your eyes and we pray together? Lord God, we, it's not only about what we just say, but the Holy Spirit, I pray that you continue to teach us to know the will of God, to obey you, to do what you ask us to do, to trust you more and more. That's the desire of our heart. So Lord God, as you rose from the dead, we first want to believe that is true, that you're alive, you live forever. We want us to believe that God raised you from the dead. And as you've been resurrected, we will also be rose with you. We want to believe God that you did this not because we deserve it, but you did this because you love us. We don't deserve your love, but God, you chose to love us. And we are so grateful. We want to believe that we have been set free from sin. We got the freedom in the kingdom of God. And we belong into your family. We've been redeemed because of what you've done in the cross. Lord, we want to believe that through your dead, your, your death and resurrection, we got the power. The power that the Bible says that when we become the son of the living God, we got the power to be called the the children of the living God, the almighty God. And Lord, I want to pray that whoever never experienced salvation in this place, Lord, may you give all of us the grace so that we may trust you. We may believe you. We may know you more and more. Let not just this Easter just pass us by, but Lord, we want to get more close to you. To love you more and more than ever before. We love you, Holy Spirit, and we trust you 
We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 That was so beautiful. Happy Easter.